Hi everyone, welcome back to Nursing Guru. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about a new topic, but which is necessary in nursing, not only in nursing, in the medical field. That is nothing but CPR, Cardio Pulmonary Resuscitation. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation is a life-saving procedure for someone who got the cardiac arrest. So here in the CPR or in the cardiopulmonary resuscitation, there are two key factors or there are two main components. Those components are the first one is chest compression and the second one is rescue breathing or mouth to mouth breathing. And before going too deeply, we need to know what is mean by cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Already we have discussed that it is a life-saving process or it is a life-saving procedure, right? The term meaning resuscitation, we are restoring or we are regaining or we are reviving someone's life. And whose life? Yes or no? So before we have told that those who got the cardiac arrest, what is maybe cardiac arrest? The heart fails to pump the blood or the heart fails to circulate the blood throughout the body. So in such situation, the patient's life eat is at risk. The person with cardiac arrest, they fails or their heart fails to pump the blood or to circulate the blood. So if there is no blood circulation or if there is no pumping of blood, the whole body parts or the vital organs of the body will not get sufficient amount of oxygen or the blood. That, that is known as anoxia or absence of oxygen in the body cells or in the body tissue. So in case of anoxia, what happen? What will happen? So there will be damage to the tissues or the damage to the vital organs can occur. Vital organs means important organs like heart, kidney, liver, brain, etc. or lungs also. So if they are not getting sufficient amount of blood or if they are not getting sufficient amount of oxygen, they will not be able to work properly or they will fail in their functioning. So in such situation, the whole body will become going to the state of death. So that is why we have said that the patient's condition is at risk. And in such situation, we need to save the patient from going to death. So like how can we prevent the death or how can we save the patient's life or revive the patient's life. So here there is an easy procedure but once after we are getting the proper training only we have to do the procedure. So that is the CPR or cardiopulmonary resuscitation. So here we are reviving or restoring the health of the cardio means heart as well as the pulmonary that is lungs. In this what are the indications of doing CPR or in which condition or in which situation of a person we can do or we can apply the CPR. Those indications are the first one is collapsed person or the collapsed patient which is nothing but if the patient is feeling giddiness or dizziness and the patient is suddenly falling down and the patient is becoming unconscious that is the collapsed condition. So in such situation if the patient is not able to breathe properly and if the pulsation is not occurring properly and the heartbeat it is not occurring properly means immediately we have to do the CPR and the next indication is if the person is not able to respond why they are not able to respond they are already weak they are already got giddiness they are already fallen down and as well as they go to the state that is unconsciousness so in such situation even though we are calling them loudly they will not be able to answer though they will not be able to respond properly so in such situation immediately we have to perform the cpr before start doing the steps of the CPR, we have to see some of the other things or the prior things. That is nothing but we have to check thoroughly the patient or the person who has undergone for the unconsciousness or who has gone to the cardiac arrest stage so that in order to prove that they are unconscious or in order to prove that they are not able to respond properly, we have to call them loudly or we, if we know their names, we have to call by their names loudly. So still, even after we are calling them loudly, if they are not able to respond, it means they are in an unconscious stage or they are not able to respond. And the next thing, we have to check for the breathing pattern of the patient or the person. 
so breathing pattern means so once if the person is unconscious or if they are fallen down when they will be lying down on the floor right so at that time we have to tilt their head little backward and we have to observe thoroughly or we have to check for the nose the mouth as well as the movement of the chest so by assessing by observing these three areas we can come to know that whether the person is breathing or not and while we are checking these three areas it should take only maximum 10 seconds within 10 seconds we have to check that the breathing pattern of the person like how we have to check the nose we have to check the or we have to observe the oral cavity or the mouth and we have to check the movements of the chest also and still if the person is not able to respond or if there is no breathing is occurring immediately we have to start the procedure during this time period we can call in the number that is 911 so this is an emergency helpline number so we will be getting help from the paramedics we have checked for or we have assessed for the breathing pattern and not only the breathing pattern we have to check for the pulsation we have to keep our fingers on both the sides of the neck so that we can feel the pulsation even if there is no pulsation is feeling in our fingers immediately we have to do the CPR procedure and now how to do the CPR or how to perform the cardiopulmonary resuscitation. So there are some steps or there is a manner or there is an initiation and there is a continuation as well as there is a termination of the procedures or how can we initiate or how can we start the CPR procedure is the patient will be lying down on the floor or on the bed. So at that time by using one hand we have to tilt the person's head backward little backward so at that time the person's chin will be coming upside so why because if the person's face is in this position we can provide the mouth to mouth breathing or we can provide the rescue breathing and before that we have to do the chest compression so in the beginning we have already discussed that the two components are mouth to mouth breathing or rescue breathing and the chest compression so the for initially we have to do the chest compression so while we are doing the chest compression we should do the check compression very carefully and how can we perform the chest compression so for doing the chest compression we can use the caregiver should use their both the hands either the left hand over the right hand or the right hand over the left hand so as your comfortable so we have to keep one hand over your other hand and by using the heel of the hand heel of the hand means this is just before the wrist this is the area of the heel of the hand by using this area we have to do the compression and where we have to compress there is a chest compression right in the chest where is the exact area so that the exact area is known as siphoid sternum or siphi sternum so that is the area where the rib cage as well as the sternum meets each other at the below or in another way the siphoid sternum or the siphi sternum situated or located just below the sternum so in that area we have to do the chest compression and while we are doing the chest compression there is a limitation the number of chest compressions are 100 to 120 minimum 100 maximum 120 chest compressions we can give and that also in one minute or in another way out of 60 seconds we can do 600 hundreds of compressions or maximum 120 compressions and one more thing there is a rescue breathing or there is a mouth to mouth breathing right so the mouth to mouth breathing or the rescue breathing can be performed even after every 30 compressions for example so once after we are performing 30 compressions or pushing down of the chest region so after the 30 compression we can do the mouth to mouth breathing or we can perform the rescue breathing so anyway there should be a time interval of 30 compressions for the rescue breathing and after again the 30 compressions we can do the one more rescue breathing the timing or the number of compressions as well as the rescue breathing is the compression is hundreds to 120 compressions per minute per one minute and the number of rescue breathing are 
2. Once again, I am telling this is the first component that is chest compression. The chest compression should be 100 to 120 in numbers that is per 1 minute. And the rescue breathings should be 2 in numbers that also after every 30 compressions. And while we are doing the compression, please note down that while we are doing the compression, we have to keep our arms straight and one hand should be overlap the another hand by using the heel of the hand and on the siphoid sternum or just below the nipple region, we have to do the chest compression. And while we are doing the chest compression, the pushing down should go 2 inches towards the chest or it should go 2 inches down. So that is about the chest compression. Now we'll see how to perform the rescue breathing or the mouth to mouth breathing. So while we are performing the rescue breathing, we have to tilt the patient head backward little and the patient chin should come upward and we have to pinch the patient nose first. Then we have to close our mouth towards the or over the patient's mouth and we can blow a couple of breath to the patient's mouth. So during that time, the patient's chest will be coming up. Because of that blowing of the breath, the patient's chest will be coming up. Simultaneously, we have to check to see whether the chest is coming upward or not. Listen, if the chest is not coming upward, we have to observe or we have to check the oral cavity whether there is something is there inside or not or whether any obstacle is there or not. If, the, if it is there, we have to remove it. Once again, we have to do the same procedure. So, the rescue breathing or the mouth to mouth breathing should be two in number. That is also again and again I am telling that is also after 30 compressions. Now, we understood how to perform a CPR both chest compression and rescue breathing for an adult. Suppose if the same situation is happening to the infants or in the children or in the neonates, how can we perform the same procedure or the CPR? So we can perform it easily as how we have done the procedure for adults. In the same way, we can do it for the infants also. We can tilt their head downward little and their chin should come up we have to pinch their nose and we have to blow the breath or we have to blow the mouth to mouth breathing and now while we are performing the chest compression we can use two fingers only by using two fingers we have to do the chest compression that also in the siphoid sternum area only so the number of compressions and the number of breathing is same as the adults and if you are performing the CPR with one more person or in your team, if there are two persons are performing the CPR procedure, how can we do it? When one person is providing or when one person is doing the rescue breathing as how we have did before, simultaneously the second person can do the chest compression. If it is in the infants, the second person can hold the baby. Hold the baby means the baby will be lying down on the floor or on the bed. The uh, rescuer or the caregiver should use their both thumbs to do the chest compression. And with the other hands, they have to wrap the other body part of the infant. Now, we are going to the last portions of the cardiopulmonary resuscitation. We have seen to whom we have performed. And we have seen how can we perform the chest compression as well as the rescue breathing both in adults how can we do and in infants how can we do so with one more person or in a team if there are two members how can we perform the both chest compression as well as the rescue breathing and now we are going to discuss about the advantages of the CPR or the merits of CPR so the main advantage is we are reviving or we are regaining the person's life. And how we are regaining the person's life in the beginning, we have already discussed that if the person is suddenly getting cardiac arrest, their heart or their cardiac system will be fail to 
pump the blood or to circulate the blood so at that time the body will not get or the vital organs will not get sufficient amount of blood or sufficient amount of oxygen so in case of anoxia in the human body it will leads to shock shock means nothing but that is a damage of body organs or body cells or body tissues because of anoxia or absence of oxygen so here by providing the cpr or by doing the cpr we are initiating or we are enhancing the circulation of blood throughout the body or into the vital organs likewise we are reviving or restoring the person's life as well as we are restoring the normal cardiac circulation or the blood circulation in the body not only the advantages for everything there is a advantage as well as disadvantages also so same like that here in the cpr also we are having some of the demerits or some of the disadvantages that disadvantage is we know that we are pushing hard to the siphoid sternum of the person or in the chest region of the person so the whole body weight we are applying on to the person's chest region so at that time the rib cage or the bones which is present in the chest region may break or it may be broken so at that time what can happen because of the breaking of the rib cage or because of the breaking of the uh, chest bones the organs which is located or which is occupied inside the thoracic cavity or inside the chest region may get damaged or it may be getting injured so that is a demerit of this cpr procedure so today in this video we have discussed about the procedure cpr so the major components of cpr are again i am telling chest compression and rescue breathing whom we have to perform and when we have to perform and when we have to perform i hope that this is a useful information for the nursing students also or the students who are in the medical field and this is a useful video for the common people also if you have any doubts you can mention it below and if you are feeling the difficulty with your nursing topics or the subjects and regarding the medical field there is a solution for all your problems called nursing guru application you can download it from the google play store thank you for watching everyone bye